<clears throat> Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. <clears throat> I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, uh, social anxiety, menopause, dyslexia, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is a productive cannabis connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. Sorry about my voice. It's a little deep because uh, I've done some deep cleaning around here, spring cleaning, and a lot of dust got up, and I've been coughing a lot from that. So, um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well today. Today is Thursday for me, and um, I decided to continue with the review on each individual character's from the TV show, Orange is the New Black. So, um, if you haven't seen any other of the videos I've done about it, please feel free to check past videos. Um, yeah. So the next character I'm going to be talking about is Piper Chapman. And it's played by the actress by the name of Taylor Schilling. So, let's roll up the ball. Got some, uh, let's call it, what is the name of this? XJ14, I believe. Oh, look at the light. The sun's finally coming out. It's been raining a lot here in sunny California, and now the sun's back. <laughs> Cheers, and thanks for joining me. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So... Piper Chapman, she's supposed to be, like, the main character in this TV show. It opens up with the first episode of the first season, what, showing her how she, um, showing one of the things that she's going to miss the most <laughs> before going to jail was showers and bathing, being able to have that intimate time. And I can agree with her. I do like a nice shower, a long, nice long shower, or a nice cozy bath with candles and <laughs> nice music playing so um <laughs> she's a really interesting character because she's one of those characters that most people will end up hating towards the end after seeing all the seasons um what it seems like to me let's just get down to the basics of this character um it just seems like to me she wants to be accepted um, she wants to be heard, and it shows when they flash back to her childhood, and they show that um, her mom um, wasn't good at handling the fact that her daughter telling her that she saw, you know, her husband kissing another woman and getting in the car and taking off with her. And this was a kid seeing it. She was a kid when she saw this, and she confronted her mom with this and the only thing her mom did was get mad at her because she wasn't supposed to be at the movie theater she was supposed to be in school so right there that's a key point showing you what kind of household and what kind of foundation or lack thereof that she grew up under where everybody just sweeps things under the rug um, his da her dad who knows if he ever confessed to the fact that he had an affair you know I didn't even know that, and that really messed her up um, about that, telling her she's grounded because she was supposed to be in school. Instead, you know, <laughs> she was at the movies, but she, her mom just totally overlooked the fact <laughs> that her daughter just told her that her husband was cheating on her, and she had no response to that because it was uncomfortable, probably, and, embar and embarrassing, too. And a lot of times when things like that happen with children and the parent just sweeps it under the rug, that could set them up for some problems later on in life in their own personal relationships with other people. So, um, case in point, um, she ends up um, going to jail. She, The reason why she was arrested <clears throat> and put in prison is because, I think it was like 10 years ago, she was involved with this woman who um, was a 
a drug deal, or what would you call it? A drug, not importer, exporter, <laughs> and for a huge drug cartel. And um, she didn't know that about this person until she started living with her and seeing what she's doing. So um, her girlfriend convinced her to um, do this, like, money exchange for drugs. I think the main drug was, I think it was heroin and was there meth in the mix? I think it was mainly heroin. And um, she convinced her to just, all you got to do is carry money. You're not going to even have to be involved in the drugs. And she agreed because she fell in love with this woman. She became, pretty much it seemed obsessed with her because if you look back on her background as a child, her mom was non-existent, really, and her dad was not really there either. So it's like she was searching for somebody, somebody to pay attention to her and someone to love her and listen to her. So she ends up getting involved with this criminal, high-class criminal, <laughs> but criminal nonetheless. And uh, <clears throat> she ends up, like, pulling the heist off. But then she decides she doesn't want to do it anymore. So um, they break up, her and her girlfriend break up. But then 10 years later, she gets um, alerted that she, she has to spend time in prison because um, they caught up with her, her girlfriend, who she thought loved her, <laughs> turned her into, told her that she was a part of it all as well. So then she ends up getting jail time and her coming from a wealthy family, um, that was just like a, a crazy adjustment for this character. And uh, they're really emphasizing the fact that um, she just no doesn't know much about um, other cultures that much. And she did everything she could to try to get to learn people, learn about people, and what they're about. But in the end, she ends up becoming what most people would see as being narcissistic um, in her approach because she got upset because she got turned down as far as trying to appease people and make them like her. She was worried so much about people liking her, you know, and so she would do all she could to impress, to make a good, you know, a good statement <laughs> in, you know, the situation she was in. And... Um, Watch the episode, watch the, the TV show. I'm not going to say much more about her. But she gets into a whole heck of a lot of trouble <laughs> through this. Um, the whole thing where they're separating, you know, people by ethnicity. And she gets involved in something where she did not want to become <laughs> a leader for a white supremacist um, group in jail, in prison. But... She ends up doing it because she screws herself over and over again. It's karma. And she gets mad that um, she's supposed to testify for this main drug cartel guy. Um, and her lawyer said, you should tell the truth. Her girlfriend, she saw her girlfriend there at the jail. And she's like, the girlfriend was telling her, I, I think you should lie about it because you could come after us and, you know, all this stuff. So she did what her girlfriend said to do. And what ends up happening is the girlfriend did just the opposite. <laughs> and she, her girlfriend ends up getting out of jail. And she gets more time on her sentence because she, she lied. So it's just, I'm going to in a nutshell, this character, she just really wants people to like her. I don't think she's evil, and I think some parts of her feels narcissistic, but to some degree, not really, because if she was narcissistic, she wouldn't do all she could to apologize and try to make things better. People that are narcissistic, they don't care, unless there's something in it for them. But I could, show, I could tell that this character was genuinely, she was not genuinely a selfish person. But when she got into this kind of environment, she started picking up traits of someone who's <laughs> like that. But you could tell deep down in her heart she's not like that. <laughs>
So, but yeah, I like this character. Um, I liked her a lot. I thought she was pretty cool because she was just trying so hard to make the best of the situation. It was culture shock for her, for real. But um, you could tell that she wasn't. She wasn't any of those things that people thought she was in her encounters with other races. She was actually a lot more culturally, um, you know, aware. But things kind of turned south <laughs> with this character, with people assuming things about her, and then she started living up to that, or their assumptions. Yeah, it's really something else. By the way, um, I'll talk a little bit about the actress. Her name is uh, Taylor Schilling, and she's really a lesbian in real life, too. <laughs> um, she was born July 27, 1984, so she's a Leo. <laughs> um, she's been in a few things um, before this. 2007, something called Dark Matters with Meryl Streep. Um, she was in something called Atlas Shrugged, Part 1 in 2011. The Lucky One in 2012. Um, something called Mercy. It's a medical drama TV show from 2009 and 2010. So, and her father in real life was a former prosecutor. <laughs> so she probably, you know, spoke with her, her father to get more, you know, information to make this, uh, this role she, that she played more accurate. Yeah, as I said, I'm going to be doing more about this on my Patreon once I get set up. More videos, more in-depth about this show because it's more than just a show for entertainment. There's so much within it. And I'll just say, her experience with, with edibles was, was weird. <laughs> it was very weird. Every time they show people partaking in edibles, they make them seem like they're, they're whacked out of their mind. But the problem is, well, the not the problem, but the the reason why is she hadn't smoked any herb or did edibles in probably ages. So a lot of times it'll hit you hard and you just end up 